it's I feel like kids, you know, I feel like you meet some kids that don't rebel against their parents and they you know, it's kind of weird sometimes. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Matt and Dan, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. It's, yeah. uh, I'm super excited. Uh, uh, I recently saw the movie. I'm really excited to talk to you about it. But before we get going, uh, Matt, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about sort of how you got to be where you are today, starting with my understanding is you grew up in a real showbiz family. Like, you know, so I'm sort of very interested to know. I mean, your mother was on 30 something. You, you know, do all these other things. So what was that like in like high school and growing up? What was it like to to live like that? You know, I I grew up, yeah, in a house where my dad was a jazz, he's a jazz pianist and my mom's an actress and a writer and all their friends were like painters or um, poets or not novelists or actors. So I just thought that's what everyone did kind of, you know, as a little kid. And then, you know, it would have been, it would have been the rebellious thing to do to become like a lawyer or something, you know? <laughs> uh, um, but it was amazing, you know, it's like a bunch of really, really um, sensitive, crazy, great, um, soulful And people. did you sort of go to regular high school and just with everybody else yeah. in the yeah. mix? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was in a band with my brother when we were kids, yeah. and I, I still have a band with my brother, and, uh, and we were on a TV show um, on Nickelodeon that, was, that my mom created that was based on our band, and my dad produced it and had a, had a little part in it. And, uh, the show ended when I was probably 13 or something, and then I started um, working with different acting teachers and doing plays in New York, um, and I was still touring with my brother playing music, and then it was like at the end of high school, I started getting parts in, in movies. So so I have two young kids. They happen to both be teenagers. Um, How old? Uh, one's 19, one's 16. Boys? Or? Older is a girl, younger is a boy. If I... Good luck. Yes. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. If I told them, uh, you know, I really think you should do your homework, or I really think you should do this work, it, it doesn't go very well. So you, were, <laughs> you were being, you've been in things that way. The 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 content was created by your parents. You were directed by your mother. And so how did I mean? You just that was easy for you that she told you what to do, and you're like, yeah. And my mom says it was like, you know, herding cattle. Yeah. Like I was 11, my brother was eight. Um, the cinematographer was secretly paying my brother five bucks to do a scene because my brother would be like, I don't want to work anymore. He's like eight, <laughs> and he'd be like, paying him five bucks under the table. And um, but but in a weird way, it taught I think um, us to see uh, working in movies and and things as a um, family environment, you know, and, and that is an environment that I feel the most comfortable uh, working in. And, uh, you know, like Dan and I have become really close through through working together. And um, uh, right, Dan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, say something. He's not no, saying anything. Yeah. He's like, I'm not no. so sure. I want five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Give me five dollars. And also it, it was it was really hard. It was, you know, I'd, we'd do, I'd write and record uh, 13 or 14 songs every year for the show and then we'd shoot the show and then we'd be in school all year and stuff. So it was like, it definitely taught me a lot about work ethic. Yeah. And um, and when we did the show, we were like insanely famous for about two years. And it was like so much so we couldn't go anywhere. And then one day I was like six feet tall suddenly and, and I'd grown like six, and, I, and, and six foot one. Um, <laughs> and I, Anymore, six four. I'm like six, six four, six seven. Uh, <laughs> you no, know, and then and then nobody knew who who we were, you know. And it was a really interesting thing to happen because it made me realize how fickle the business is, and that really it's about doing the work and 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 uh, kind of putting your head down and 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 whatever comes of it comes of it, you know, is it, it's out of your control. College, what happened? Did you? Uh, I hear that you did sort of. Go? Yeah, I went. I did go to one day. One uh, day of college. One day of Sarah Lawrence. I remember my, my grandma, she passed away this, this year, but oh, when, thanks. Um, but but uh, she was in a book club meeting and, and all her friends that were friends saying, my grandson got into Princeton. My grandson um, got into Yale. And she was like, well, my grandson was in a movie where he got into Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of worked ah, out. That works. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so let's sort of move over to uh, the Kill Team. So. Uh, how did you find out the movie? What attracted you to it? What, you know, what? 
Um, I had seen the the documentary without even knowing that it was being uh, made into a narrative, and I was just really ho horrified by it. And I thought it was an amazingly um, intimate documentary. Uh, and uh, five dollars. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and then um, and then Isaac Klausner, who produced uh, uh, Paper Towns, um, the movie I did. He said, "Do you want to do something totally different?" Um, and I said, definitely. And then he said, why? There's this. Yeah, because this is really a pretty big departure from any of the other things you've done, right? Definitely, definitely. Um, especially um, this kind of world, you know. Um, there was a long period of where it was gestating and, and turning into a real thing because movies take a long time to become real, you know. And uh, so in the end process, Alexander Skarsgård got involved and, and, uh, um, and, the script kept getting tweaked and changed a I mean, bit. Yeah, up and up until and through production. So through yeah. production. How um, unusual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was like two and a half years or something from the time that I signed on to when we made it, which meant that I had been kind of sitting with this story for a long time, um, and it had been somewhere in my you know unconscious mind. So you've been living this story for a decade. Yeah, I'd like to say I, I, I started this movie two kids ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's been about uh, nine years. Well, let's see, I, it was 2011, I picked up the, the magazine article that inspired the documentary. And uh, so it's been a long, a long time living with this story. So what was it about the documentary that you felt was left undone that you wanted to do the feature? I mean, that, you know, it, obviously there was an itch there that you were still scratching. Yeah, I was excited at the opportunity to tell the story from a first person present tense point of view because the documentary by necessity and by definition was retrospective. I was talking to the guys, right. you know, a year after the events in question, yeah. right? And so it was mediated by the distance of time. And here was an opportunity to try to present the same story in a way that was immediate, visceral, holding the audience's head underwater for 87 minutes and asking them to face the same kind of choices that Adam Winfield made and, and some of the other guys uh, in the true story. Yeah. And I, I was excited about the, the opportunity to you know create an experience that was um more immediate and did everything the documentary couldn't do right it placed us there when yeah. the documentary couldn't yeah. be there yeah 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 yeah, for sure as you put this film together you went from one to the other did you was it super easy like you just said oh you know i've got this script super and easy. so i'm just gonna send it around hollywood yeah. and i'm gonna get famous people like alexander and matt and they're just immediately gonna say yes someone's gonna give me tens of millions of dollars and we're done yep is that is that how it happened yes <laughs> uh, no, it was, I mean, the first, the first piece of it was just learning to write a script, which is not, you know, you think it's going to be super easy because you know the story, you've done all the research, you know the characters, you just, I mean, it feels like you're just going to, in, in a sense, transcribe the documentary into narrative form and you're done. Um, and that's, you know, if I hadn't had that degree of naivety about the process, I might not have even started because I had no conception of how difficult it would be. It how was, long did it take you to get Oh, I mean, done? well over a year. And then it didn't stop. As Nat said, I kept working on it, kept right. working on it. Went and when you got the script down and you started sending it out, was it immediately well received? Like, how? By the time it started getting sent around, it was. It was an incredible yeah. script yeah. that he wrote. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, when it was ready, people really responded to it. And I was fortunate to get a lot of you know, really talented actors. So the, without giving too much of the movie away, um, uh, it's really about what you do when you're in this dilemma of, um, you know, your boss, whoever's your leader, asks you to do things that you think are really fundamentally wrong. And we see this happening, you know, outside. Yours is the most extreme example, because if you get it wrong, you might get killed. Right. <laughs> um, other people, I mean, it's happening right now. I mean, whistleblowers in the Trump administration with Ukraine, I mean, that's happening right now. Right. I mean, you spent a lot of time thinking about this question. You know, what do you think about the way that we're treating these whistleblowers? You know, there's never been a more important time to tell the truth and to be um, respectful of the people that put their necks out. To really put your put yourself on the line like some of these people do is, um, I, I find it really impressive. You know, and I think it's obviously um, like with what's happening now with with Trump and. Um, and, and, and kind of in any world, especially with toxic masculinity, standing up to, to the, the powers that be. And I mean, it's a, it's a brave thing to do. 
I mean, I think this film is a, is a case study in whistleblower intimidation. I mean, this, this just shows you how difficult it is. We all imagine the person we would like to be yeah. um, if challenged with defending our values, but the reality of being heroic and being that courageous, especially when the price is, is potentially your life or your livelihood or your family, uh, makes that decision incredibly hard. And I think you know it's important to, to be honest about how difficult it is to be a whistleblower um, and, and therefore to respect the people who do make that choice. There's reason that there, there are laws that protect whistleblowers yeah. um, because they're sacrosanct. They're, they're the cornerstone of a healthy democracy. And if we don't protect them, if, if they disappear, um, then, then we're in trouble. Yeah. I, I think it has an even broader message than that. I suspect that everyone in this room and everyone in life at some point has someone in authority who asks them to do something that they shouldn't do. Right. And they have a decision at that point about, should I do it? Should I do a little bit of it? Should I do none of it? Right. And you know, those who hesitate before doing the right thing. It's like thing. you told me I had to wear those glasses so we would match. <laughs> I did, and, then, and you I, didn't do and it. And I didn't do it because I thought, you know what, those are your glasses. And it's your personal style. Yeah, but and now I'm the selfie gonna... I've got with you doesn't match. I know, now we don't have matching stuff. Like, this is a bummer. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, it, I, you know, I love the movie. It's hard to say you love something that's so heavy, but I really thought it was a great movie. If you guys are going to go see it, highly recommend you see the documentary second. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think you. it's a really I great, a great uh, continuation because the film sort of gets you there and gets you all this incredible tension. And then the documentary sort of takes you on after that about what happened to these characters, fantastic. Uh, you know, and then to punish someone for following their leader and then doing the right thing just seems so unfair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and unfortunately it's the reality, it is the know, reality. For, for so many. Um, and, and you know, you have to remember you're a young person, you're in a very dangerous um, part of the world. You depend on the guys around you for your security, your highest, you, every moral impulse you have is going to be superseded by the magnetic pull of that group. Yeah. That's the thing that's going to keep you alive and, and, right. and get you through that. And you're scared and, and unsure of what's right. You're not even sure what's right and wrong because it's the first time you've been exposed to this kind of thing. You know, he, he, what you get from the documentary is that they're kids, you know, that, which, yeah. is what's, which is what's terrifying about it. You know, that yeah. they're not any old, they're, you know, young, younger than your oldest, you know, yeah. <clears throat> and they're given guns. And I mean, I... Yeah. I don't. I can't even imagine what I would, you know, like, or thinking of my little cousins who are that age. You know, um, the responsibility is so big, and and the um, and you're so impressionable. I mean, so impressionable, and you can see how they, you know, through the, in the movie, you can see how they can easily be influenced. Yeah. it's a it's a movie about the gray area of yeah. to, what it means to tell the truth, and and um, um, and meeting Adam, I saw somebody who was a, you know, he's not all the way through his his journey with this trauma but he's on a he's he's at a different place than he was during the story so it's, it's almost like i got to see my character in the future right. mm. um and uh and he definitely has some this trauma that um of course and uh but i feel like um it was yeah invaluable it's interesting i mean the way that you prepared for the role and your process during the filming i feel like you lived you know you lived that story in a way that was um you know, some of the, it's, as a first time feature director, I was learning a lot about how different actors work. And, you know, the way that I discovered Nat works is he really, he doesn't, there's no kind of on and off with the, with, there's no acting per se. There's no pretending. It's just sort of living these really deeply felt emotions that he's been somehow able to arouse in himself. And, um, and he's in every scene in the movie, except for maybe one or two shots. And so every day for 31 days, he's living this just torturous existence. And I just can't even imagine. I just felt so grateful at the end of that shoot that you were able to just physically and emotionally make it through because it was just, I mean, I, I felt bad every day uh, putting you under the camera because <laughs> it was just like, um, just heartbreaking to watch. And I know when your parents saw it, it was like. Yeah, my parents are really disturbed by it. Yeah, you know, just seeing their son go through something yeah. like that. But I think. I think in a in a weird way through doing a part like that I come out with more empathy and 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 more understanding of myself and and people and a, a different life that I am not connected to I realize has you know it's like if you boil any story down um, and you boil most people down I think that's why movies are so important and art is so important because you <clears throat> in in a good story you can project yourself into almost any character 
Thank you so much for coming. Thank yeah, thanks okay. for having us. Yeah, great. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.